Hey everybody, welcome back to Windy City Astrophotography. I'm Nick, and in this video I'm giving my first impressions of a telescope I've been testing out recently, the SV Boney SV503 Refractor. So full disclosure, SV Boney sent me this telescope asking me to test it out and give my honest opinion. I'm not being paid by them to make this video, and they really just want to know what I think. So let's dive right in. The SV Boney SV503 is an achromatic doublet refractor with a 714 millimeter focal length and a 102 millimeter aperture, f7. A recommended accessory is the 0.8 photo reducer and field flattener, which is designed specifically for this scope and works really well. I found the field to be very flat all the way to the edge when using the flattener, and with that focal adjustment, you're gonna be at 571 millimeters focal length, and the speed is gonna be f5.6. So I found the scope very easy to set up and use right from the start. It's very well balanced, it's not too heavy, and attaching accessories for the imaging train was no issue. The flattener goes right into the optical tube and getting the correct backspacing for the camera is nice and easy. The focuser is a two-speed rack and pinion focuser and it has pre-drilled holes on the bottom for attaching an autofocuser. The focus tube itself is marked with the back focus measurements. It actually has 90 millimeters of back focus, so depending on your setup requirements, you should have no issue achieving focus. The focuser is definitely solid. It's got a really nice feel and doesn't have any noticeable wobble. It works quite well, either manually or with an autofocuser. The entire rear assembly can be rotated, and the locking mechanism has a really nice solid feel to it. It's definitely not gonna slip. And coming from the world of the Rasa, where the camera is in front of the corrector plate, and rotating the camera is a little bit of a chore, this was certainly a treat, being able to frame things up and rotate the assembly right out there in the field. The top of the tube rings have pre-drilled holes for attaching accessories and I love the large knobs that are on these for easy turning, even with gloves on. The dew shield on the front is extendable, and it does a really nice job of holding its position when extended. There's increased tension as it slides out, so it's definitely not gonna budge. I was able to put my flats panel assembly on the top, outside with no issue of it sliding back. I will say I ran the scope without a dew heater assembly on the main optics for the few nights I was out with it. Only a few hours each night, but there was absolutely no issue with dew with that shield extended. I certainly wouldn't recommend doing that all the time, but this is certainly more dew resistant than something with larger glass or something like a Rasa or Schmidt Cassegrain with that corrector plate in the front. I set up for imaging with all of my usual accessories for the Rasa, an 80 millimeter guide scope for the ASI 290mm mini guide camera. My imaging camera is the ASI 1600mm Pro and I was shooting through Botter high speed narrowband filters which I will say, they're tuned for f2, so I was probably losing a little bit of signal transmission, but I was still getting a nice strong signal for the speed of the scope, and I was able to get some really nice data. At some point, I do want to test this telescope with a one-shot color camera and maybe a multi-band pass narrowband filter and see what I can get there. The whole assembly is sitting on the iOptron SEM40 mount with two counterweights and being driven by the ASIR Plus. Now, of course, the limiting factor for all of astrophotography is the weather, but I was able to get a few clear nights, at least for a section of each night, to be able to get out there and get some imaging done. For the target, I chose the Cygnus wall region of the North American Nebula. It's something really nice and bright, plenty of strong signal in all three channels to test the scope out. I used two minute exposures at Unity Gain, and I compiled about an hour of S2 data, an hour and a half of O3, and about four hours of H alpha. And I think it turned out really nice. This scope is certainly capable of some really nice images. And I think it's a great intermediate scope for someone looking to get deeper into astrophotography. Okay, so lots of positives. What about negatives? Well, I think it's important to consider what a scope is being marketed as, what it's trying to be. And with that in mind, I will say there's not a whole lot of negatives here. So this is not a super high-end apochromatic refractor with the best quality glass. This is an acromat with FPL 51 glass still absolutely capable of good images, and its price point reflects that. It's $700 or thereabouts for the scope, and then $100 or so for the flattener and reducer. Now, if you know anything about telescopes and refractors especially, the sky is the limit for how much you could spend. Sure, you could spend 10 times that amount on a super high-end refractor, and uh, yeah, you'd have a really nice scope, but would you have a camera that's able to take advantage and show off those really nice optics? filters that can do it justice, a mount that's able to carry such a big scope, and enough clear nights a year to be able to really take advantage of it. So for the SV503 refractor, it's about $800 all told, and it's about the same price point as something like the Red Cat 51. Now with the Red Cat, you're going to be looking at an apochromatic refractor, 
So slightly higher quality glass as well, and slightly faster speed. But your aperture is going to be just about half of what you've got here with the SV503, and the focal length is possibly going to leave you wanting. You're not going to be able to get up close and personal with a lot of these objects. Now the SV503 at f5.6 is not particularly slow or fast. It's kind of in the middle of the road. I'm going to confess to being pretty spoiled by the speed of the Rasa. It's an f2 scope. It is blazingly fast. Uh, to put it in perspective, compared to f5.6 with the SV503, it's about eight times faster at collecting light. So all else being equal, which it never really is, with the SV503 with six and a half hours integration on the North America Nebula, I could have gotten something similar to that with the Rasa in less than an hour. Now those comparisons, by the way, are based on the square of the F ratio. So F2, two squared is four, and then F5.6, 5.6 squared is uh, almost 32. So 32 divided by four is eight. So the speed of the Rasa is going to be eight times faster than that of the SV503. Now, of course, aperture and a lot of other things can come into play with that calculation. But overall, for speed, this scope is about the middle of the road. Now, one small quibble, the pre-drilled holes on the top are definitely nice. I didn't find it quite as intuitive as I would have liked. Maybe the inclusion of a plate on top or some properly sized screws or attachment accessories would have been nice. So overall, for what this scope is and what it's trying to be, it's a really nice scope. I would highly recommend this scope for someone who's looking to get a little bit deeper into astrophotography. Maybe they've been doing uh, some DSLR and Star Tracker work, and they're looking to have a first computerized and guiding setup. This is a perfect scope for that. It's capable of very nice images, and there are plenty of thoughtful design features that make it really compatible with a lot of the accessories on the astrophotography market. So the optics are solid, the construction feels great, and I would definitely recommend this for someone looking to start wading into some of the deeper waters of this awesome hobby.